Hey, this is Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 39. On Now You Know. All right, so if you watched our in-depth uh, yesterday, you'll know that we were in San Francisco last week. Um, we just got back about uh, six hours ago. Yeah, um, red-eye flight. So, uh, yeah, pardon us if we're a bit tired. So let's jump right into the news. Mm -hmm. Toyota and Tesla have ended their partnership. Okay. Now, what does this mean? Well, remember a few years ago, Toyota was actually having Tesla make um, their powertrain for their RAV4. They made about 2,500 RAV4 powertrains. They only sold them pretty much in California. Mm -hmm. And Toyota invested $50 million in Tesla in the beginning. And that's uh, Toyota is one of the companies that Tesla bought their factory from mm -hmm. for a song. Um, and so I think Toyota was kind of thinking there might be a partnership there down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and they bought a lot of stock in Tesla at a very good price. They sold a lot of it back in 2014 and made a very good profit. But they still had some shares, and we just found out that they've unloaded all of them so they no longer have any Tesla shares and they really don't have any partnerships anymore with Tesla. Uh, Toyota spokesman Ryo Saki said um, as much the other day to routers. He said, our development partnership with Tesla ended a while ago. And since there has not been any new developments on that front, we decided it was time to sell the remaining stake. So Toyota CEO, Akio Toyota, is actually the grandson of the founder of Toyota, Kiichiro Toyota. Akayo Toyota is now the president of the new EV business planning department that will oversee the launch of all the new electric vehicles that will be coming out in, by 2020. So Tesla has started bundling. What is what is bundling? Well, so you know that if you want to get a Model S or X right now, you can do lots of different configurations. In fact, there's so many that there's over 1,500 possible ways to configure the car. Mm -hmm. That makes it pretty, how shall we say, inefficient when you're making the car because that means that there's so many different possible ways to make it that there's parts coming in from all over the place, and I guess it's just not as efficient as you'd like to be. Mm -hmm. So Tesla is trying to make you bundle the car. They're giving you some kind of pre-bundled options, like would you like this premium option or this standard option? I see. And that okay. way it makes it a little simpler for them. Um, and so they're starting to do more of the bundling. Um, and in fact, one of the things they're knocking off as an option is the 90 kilowatt hour battery pack, which won't be available after June 8th. I see. So the, your only option really will be from, what, like a 75 to 100. Up to 100. Okay. Simplifying kind of the whole factory process. Mm -hmm. um, and they're showing that same bundling process is probably going to take place with the Model 3, right? There's only 100 um, plus configurations that you can do with the Model 3. So let's talk about that because that'd be kind of good to know if you're planning to buy your Model 3. Yep. It looks like right now there'll be five categories of choices for your Model 3. What are those? So there's going to be colors, okay. so paint job. So we think, what, uh, we know of blue, black, silver, or, what, or white. Mm -hmm. We think there might be the red, right? Because we've seen the signature red. So, I don't know, four or five colors to choose from at the moment. Okay. Uh, there's also configurations. What so is that's that? The, it's the battery configuration. It's either 60 or 75 kilowatt hour battery. Okay. Um, and that will determine uh, your range. Okay. For the biggest factor in, in determining your range. Yep. Uh, the roof, which will either be between a solid, you know, metal roof mm -hmm. or an all glass roof, which is an option. Okay. Um, wheels, either 18 inch or 19 inch. Okay. Um, and then a either a black, white, or tan interior. So if you multiply that out, you get 120 different possible options or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. And so that's probably in the at least in the initial run, probably the options you'll get. Now I wouldn't be surprised if there's more combinations and options later on, mm -hmm. uh, because we haven't even talked about all wheel drive. In the beginning, they're just going to be offering just the one motor. So um, that'll be another whole option that'll increase it to like 200 configurations. So Hyundai is coming out with a new EV. So they're coming out with basically what's going to be called the Kona EV. Um, this is going to be a compact SUV, um, about a 50 kilowatt hour battery, and it should be coming out by the fall of 2018 in Europe. Oh, so not the US at first. Not the, yeah, so they're going to roll it out in Europe and I suppose, depending on how it does there, they might decide to... Like rebrand it or... Or do whatever they're going to do. Um, so interesting starting specs. Uh, the price is 35,000 euros. That's 39K in US okay. American dollars. They're s saying that the range is going to be around 500 kilometers. Uh, realistically, we think that that's going to be around 350 kilometers or 200 miles. Oh. So, I mean, I think that's quite a good option if you're you were looking for a compact suv 
um, EV and you, you know, don't have the money to get a Model X. Or, I mean, a Model X is not a compact SUV. That's interesting because this is Hyundai's first long range EV. Um, they're mm -hmm. currently selling the Ionic EV, which is the most energy efficient EV and it costs about 29.5. I think this might be a smart move because when this comes out, there won't be the Model Y yet. And right. this might be trying to get into the Model Y sales. It'll be one of the um, only EVs that Tesla won't be offering at that moment. That's true. So this could be kind of a smart move on Hyundai's part to kind of nestle right into that subcompact SUV range. So do you think that the the traditional car manufacturers are going to try and make EVs that Tesla isn't making so they don't directly compete? Because, I mean, the Bolt Ooh. is a hatchback. hatchback. Um, of course, the S is a hatchback, but it costs a lot more than the Bolt. Um but and it I mean, doesn't really fit the normal what you think of, of as a hatchback. hatchback. That's yeah, that could be what they're doing is is saying we can't go head to head with Tesla at the moment. Let's find ways where we can go into uh, different classes that they don't have. Right. So I mean, this puts them ahead in terms of the Model Y. But I mean, when the Model Y comes out, it seems like I, I mean, we have no idea what the all the features and and, and cool stuff are going to be with the uh, Model Y. So I suppose it's too early to tell it if is. the Model Y would you know, completely knock it out of the market. It's excellent to see new EVs getting made. So a quick story here from Tesla's solar roof. Um, Tesla's solar roof has gotten UL approval. Now, what is UL? So UL stands for Underwriters Laboratory. Um, basically, if you pick up any appliance, anything that has electrons moving around inside of it, uh, it's probably going to have a UL sticker on it. Basically, they do a ton of testing to make sure that it's safe, it works, um, everything like that, and then they slap their logo on it to, you know, to signify that. And so they gave uh, the solar roof a Class A marking for the roofing product, which is the highest classification available for roofing products. So yeah. this opens the way for the permits to start rolling. Right. Not a terribly exciting story, but it's an important story nonetheless. Yeah. Here's a kind of complicated story because it involves a world trade, which is not my forte. But um, basically, it's that the um, there's a couple companies that have filed... Uh, for protection from the World Trade Organization. Mm -hmm. They want the U.S. to investigate whether China has been selling uh, solar cells so cheaply that it's hurting their business. So this could amount to a 40 cent per watt tariff on imported solar cells that are oh. primarily coming from China. Now, Tesla is primarily making their solar cells at the Buffalo uh, Gigafactory in mm -hmm. Buffalo, New York. Um, and so they would not be affected by this. So the U.S. International Trade Commission makes its determination by September 22nd. And then if they find affirmatively that there has been some kind of trade problem, they will send their recommendation to President Trump, who would then have um, it on his desk in November. Mm -hmm. And then he could decide whether he wants to implement this or not. And it could be implemented for at least four years. So this could have a huge impact. And, and so it would be retroactive. So it would go all the way back to May 17th when exactly. this was filed. Exactly. Um, yeah, so Suniva and Solar World are the two companies that filed for this. Suniva is on the verge of bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. And so if this ruled in their favor, it might actually help them through the bankruptcy process or maybe they'd be able to skirt bankruptcy. Yeah. Um, and they're claiming that basically Chinese solar cells are so cheap that they can't compete. This tariff would more than double the price of lower priced imported panels and would raise the cost of large scale utility products by 40 percent. Commercial products would go up by 30 percent and homeowners would it would go up for, by 20 percent for solar panels for for those roofs. Wow. So I guess the big question for a lot of you out there, because we're not experts in this by any right. means, is what do you think about this? I mean, from a U.S. point of view, maybe it's a positive thing, right? It helps Tesla and First Solar and other companies that are U.S. based. But from a solar perspective, but for I mean, for a global perspective, you're increasing the price of solar around the world artificially. Right. You can do it for cheaper in, in certain places. So, I mean, that is, that's a tough call. It is a tough call. I, right. don't, I really don't know how to come down on this. Um, we'd love to read your comments to see what your thoughts are, because mm -hmm. we know a lot of viewers that we have are from all over the world. Okay, so we have another political story for you. Elon Musk just left Trump's uh, Technology Business Advisory Council. Okay. Um, and this is because President Trump has officially announced that they're going to be withdrawing from the Paris Climate Accord. This was um, an agreement between hundreds of countries around the world saying that we are going to try and lower our CO2 emissions. We're going to try and prevent climate change. Trump says that we're going to back out of it as a country. All right. So Elon tweeted on June 1st, am departing presidential councils. Climate change is real. Leaving Paris is not good for America or the world. Yeah. Elon had been tweeting up until this that he really was strongly recommending that, that Trump, you know, stay with the Paris Climate Accords. But when Trump announced that he wasn't, 
Elon pulled the plug. Yeah. So Texas says no to Tesla bills. What does this mean? So basically, Tesla legislature has ended two Tesla-backed bills that would have allowed Tesla to sell cars directly to customers in the state. So I guess what's important to understand here is that Tesla can still operate service centers in the state, and it can show customers its vehicles, it can take them on test drives, but it can't discuss pricing or encourage sales of the vehicle. So that would look like, hello, sir, this is a $70,000 Model S. Don't you want to buy it? Right. That can't go on. What can go on is that you can answer technical questions about the car. You can take them for test drives. But when it comes to, oh, what will this cost me? You You have have to go. You have to refer them to the website. Yeah, right. So, I mean, this is kind of dumb because they're not preventing any of the Tesla sales. No. If you buy the car, you buy it through the website, just like you buy most Tesla cars. Right, but here's Um, the bummer is that if you're a Texas resident, your car comes registered from California, you then have to go re-register it in your state. Which So you're just making some more red tape for your, your buyers, but it's not stopping anyone. Right. But it, it's not really helping consumers at all because, I mean, no. they're still able to buy the car. Right. It's just making it more difficult for them. They're not going to be able to talk to the, um, you know, to the people at the Tesla showrooms and ask about pricing prices. Questions. It's, exactly. It's, and they won't be able to make quite as, a, as an informed decision, exactly. technically, because they won't be able to talk. Right. And it, they're one of the few states left that are still fighting Tesla on this. Tesla has a statement, once again, the legislature failed to act on Texans' demands for 21st century car buying options, meaning the state will continue to fall behind and lose out on valuable economic development opportunities. So some interesting sales figures here from May of 2017 here in the U.S. Um, these numbers just came in. It's estimated that 16,568 plug-ins were sold. So I want to be clear, we're not talking about battery only. This is just any car that plugs in. It can still have a gas engine in it. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Um, It was a solid 44.5% gain over the 11,000 plus that were sold a year ago. Mm -hmm. It's also an all-time record for the month. So that's pretty cool. Uh, For the year so far, 71,758 EVs have now been delivered. And these are just plug-ins again. Again, just plug-ins. And that's 44% more than the first five months of 2016. Now, a few little trivia questions for you. What's the number one selling car, do you think, this month? In that category. Um, Remember, it's plug-ins. Right. So, I mean, my first thought would be like a Nissan Leaf or something like that. Yeah, it's not Nissan. It's a Toyota, though. Okay. Um, Does Toyota sell any EVs? Think about the one that goes like 26 miles before it needs the gas engine. Oh, the Prius Prime. Prius Prime is the number one plug-in that was sold with 1,908 units, followed by the Chevy Volt with uh, 1817, that's the Volt. Mm -hmm. Um, And then came the Model X, which kind of surprised me, about 1,700 units. Model S was 1,600 units. So that was kind of interesting. Now, uh, what do you think the number one manufacturer of plugins was for the month? Um, Number one manufacturer. Manufacturer, probably Toyota. I mean, if they sold the most. Get this, GM. GM. With 3,400 units, and that's because they make the Volt and the Bolt. Put those two together, you get your sales. And number two is Tesla mm-hmm. with 3,300. Uh, Ford, which surprised me, is number three with 2,000 because they have got the Focus and the Energy. And the C-Max. And the C-Max. Uh, and then came Toyota, BMW, Nissan, and so forth. I don't know if I like this whole scheme of, of calling these all plug-ins. I wouldn't consider them to be equal cars and any stretch of the imagination. But they're not hybrids in the sense that um, a lot of the earlier Priuses were were not plug-in at all. Like you had to run it entirely off gas. So you could argue that if you run your Prius for short trips that you're running entirely on battery power. I suppose you could argue that, but I'm going to argue that it's kind of you call, you call foul. All right, so our next story here is a SpaceX story. Very exciting news just came in with the first reflight of Dragon. So what is Dragon? So um, we've seen the first stage be reused before. So that's the big rocket that sits at the bottom. Right, they've done that a lot. They've done that a lot. They've launched rockets and have them come back down, and then they launch one, um, you know, of these first stage cores again. Um, But the Dragon is the very tip of this Falcon 9. Uh, The Falcon 9, again, is the rocket, but the Dragon is the capsule. Sometimes it can get a little bit. Right, but what does the capsule capsule do? So um, this particular capsule was a resupply mission. So it's basically uh, a big moving truck. 
that you you're putting a bunch of um, you know food and and water and supplies and science experiments into, and then you're trucking it up to the International Space Station. Oh, okay. So this has been reused from CRS four mission four. This mm-hmm. is now we're on CRS mission eleven. So this was used a while ago. It's really cool news because you you get to reuse the cargo capsule means that you save money. Right. Um, so we've been reusing the rocket, which is that 14-story rocket, but now we're reusing the capsule. If you can start reusing more and more parts, you save more and more money. Right. It, it's like if you had to, whenever you moved, you had to rent a U-Haul, and but then, then like you then like crashed it into the ocean or something, and it was like, actually, you know, if it just burned up in the atmosphere, and then you lost it, and it was like, oh boy, like we lost our U-Haul truck. Gotta get another one. It would cost a lot of money. Right. Um, but because you rent them, and then you return them, and you use them again, it's not that bad. So this is uh, historic because of the reuse. This capsule was full of 6,000 pounds of cargo. We're talking about over 40 science experiments, one of which um, is called the ROSA. It's a rolled solar array that weighs 700 pounds. Now, what does that mean? So they're trying to do tests um, to determine better and more efficient ways to send satellites up. Okay. Um, when you send up a satellite, um, you got to power it somehow. You can't use an extension cord. No. Uh, nope. Uh, we don't have one that's long enough. That's the only problem. Plus, um, it would get tangled. It would probably get tangled on its orbit around the Earth. Yeah, a lot of technical problems with extension cords and space travel. Um, so what they've decided to do is... Um, use solar panels for a majority of the satellite. And what's wrong with the kind we have now, the big flat panels? Um, you got to fold them up. And folding is complicated. Um, if you've ever made paper airplane, origami, that kind of thing, like you have to be pretty good at it. Um, and it's also not that space efficient. Mm. Things got to fold. You have to have hinges and stuff like this. Rosa is going to, you're going to roll it up just like a, a yoga mat. So nice and simple. Anyone cool. can do that. And then it unrolls. Um, and so it should be pretty space You know what I like about things like this is usually things that we test in space later come down to things that we use on Earth. So it could be that we figure out how to do it in space, and then maybe we'll be having rolling out solar panels all over the place. That's like true. instead of rolling out the red carpet at you know premier events, you'll roll out the solar panel. That's true. Also, as one of their science experiments, is NICER. So NICER is a neutrino star analyzer. This is an 800-pound module that's going to be attached to the outside of the International Space Station, and it's going to study pulsars. Wow, Um, that sounds cool. And what is sextant, which is another science experiment? Right, so sextant is basically kind of like what it sounds during the, you know, explorers and stuff like that. So used to be when you get on a ship, uh, there was no GPS. We didn't have satellites. Uh, you know, your name was Magellan and you wore a funny hat. There was no way to know where you were in terms of like radio waves beaming down at you. So you had to use the stars and mm-hmm. you'd use something called a sextant. You'd look up at the stars and you'd say, oh, it's at this, you know, uh, inclination and it's, you know, at this compass latitude and here's another star. I know roughly where I am on the earth. Okay. Um, this is going to study how we can use that same idea Mm -hmm. um, just in space. Oh, to find your way around in space. Right. So instead of us treating the sky as sort of this two-dimensional backdrop or that's sort of wrapped around a a globe, we're treating it as a 3D um, point cloud because that's essentially what all the stars are. Wow. Um, And then if you can say, you know, oh, what's the telemetry between these two stars? oh, it's, you know, 85 degrees, this, that, or the other thing, I know where I am in space now. So is this so that we can uh, soon go to Mars and do it autonomously and just be like, bring me to Mars? Right, so, I mean, this is going to allow us to know where we are um, with a higher degree of accuracy um, all throughout the solar system without needing, um, you know, positioning satellites and that That's sort of thing. cool. So it's like a GPS for space. Wow. The other thing that made this historic was that it was the 100th launch from um, launch pad 39A. The first launch was Apollo 4 way back on November 9th, 1967. So we're talking almost 50 years later, we now have the 100th launch from this launch pad. Pretty, pretty damn yeah, cool. Pretty damn cool. Um, the footage is just amazing. Um, I can't imagine how hard it is to do what they just did. Not only, you know, relanding the rocket, but they had to launch this rocket at the precise second so that they could meet up with ISS. Yeah, so this is called an instantaneous launch window. Um, And what that means is um, there's a certain amount of time for you to get your rocket up into space. um, And the International Space Station is sort of flying, like you can sort of imagine you're throwing a baseball, trying to hit another baseball that's flying over your shoulder, um, but, of course, everything is moving much faster than you can throw a baseball or and a lot higher than you can throw a baseball. And they're not even going to meet up for a couple of days. Like, right. I mean, th- so you, you launch it, you try and get it really close, and then there's some adjustments that you make, and finally uh, you dock. So or, cool. Or, in this case, it's getting caught by the arm. 
So docking isn't the official term. I believe it's called berthing, although the comment section will prove me wrong. So thank you for that. <laughs> uh, speaking of comments, um, we have got two viewer comments this week. Okay. Um, they are sort of in conjunction with each other. So Joseph Stott said, somebody will have to make a 200 mile range EV for $15,000 before they're seriously considered by the majority of people. Interesting comment. Um, and then Milo Notch is God said, used model three should hit that target. And I think that they're both totally they're right. Totally right. I mean, the Model 3 is still above a lot of people's price points in terms of, like, I need to buy a car. Oh, this one's $35,000? That's out of my price range. Yeah, I mean, the reason why things like the Accord, the Corolla, the Civic are, you know, the big sellers in this country, at least, is because they're affordable cars. They're in the ten dollars to $18,000 price range. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not even including when you get into the used market. Right. And so when we talk about a $35,000 car plus, you're starting to talk about Audis and more of the, the higher end price range. But I think that it is exciting because um, unlike an internal combustion engine car, the Model 3 is not going to have the same level of maintenance. Exactly. Um, but uh, its resale value, I think, will still be about half of its of its MSRP because yeah. um, there's going to be just so many cool new features that are going to be coming to the Model 3 and the Model S and the Model X. Yeah, we, um, we've got so much data now from Model S's um, and from Nissan Leafs and mm -hmm. so forth to show that when these new electrics go into the used market, they usually drop by quite a bit. I would say roughly half. So if you look at a Model S that was new a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and now you look at the used market, you can pick up a used Model S in the $40,000, $45,000 price range, which is half of what it was new. Right. So I think that this is really interesting because the people that are going to be buying Model S's, Model X's, and Model 3's now are basically going to be subsidizing people in the future who are going to be buying used EVs while, you know, Presumably, these people who just bought the, you know, a new Model S or Model X are going to be moving on to, to flashier and, and more advanced cars. Right, because the Model 3 is going to keep getting better just like the Model S. Like there's going to be new, you know, hardware that they're probably going to add and stuff mm -hmm. like that or new colors or new seats or whatever. And so a lot of people are going to want to get that. Um, and just for whatever reason, there'll be so many coming onto the used market because there's going to be, we hope, hundreds of thousands of them out there. Right. And so when car manufacturers are talking about 2020 as their target for coming out with these new fancy um, electric cars, I honestly am like... That's not that exciting because I'm excited for 2020 when there's going to be all these used Teslas that you won't have to worry about, you know, fixing the carburetor and mm -hmm. fixing the, uh, you know, the broken transmission and all that stuff because there'll be very few things that go wrong on these cars. Right. Um, and they're going to last for a good long time. So great comments. They're both exactly right. Yeah. It's really important to have low priced EVs. All right. Every week we like to tell you about new superchargers. And first we want to thank our supercharger reviewers because they've been sending in videos and they're awesome. Check them out. Hi, Zach and Jesse. This is Michael from the Netherlands. I'm at the eight stall Tesla charging station in Eindhoven, the Netherlands. We're at the parking lot uh, of a Van der Valk hotel. It's a paid parking lot. Um, and you have a conference uh, center here. Uh, and also um, we're close to Country Club. And for the people who don't own a Tesla and uh, want to charge, there's a quick charging station and two semi-quick charging stations so you can charge your own uh, Ford CMX for instance. Wow, I just love seeing superchargers and destination chargers all over the world. If you want to submit um, a video to us, all you have to do is go find a uh, Tesla supercharger or even a destination charger, because yep. those are sometimes at some really fun cool locations. Um, Shoot them in landscape mode if you can. Yeah, with your phone, so sideways. Rectangle. Yep. And also um, make it as short as you can, like 20 seconds, mm -hmm. and show us as much cool stuff, not just the superchargers, because we know what those look like. Right, but all around. Um, upload that to YouTube, send us the YouTube link, and we can um, you know, put them into uh, Tesla Time News. So super awesome. Thank you, guys. All right, so permitted this week are two new superchargers in California. Yes, so uh, one in Yermo. And one in Sacramento. And going under construction this week are a bunch. Uh, first one is in Morgantown, West Virginia. 
Breezewood, Pennsylvania, Manzanares, Spain, Tanum, Sweden, Irwin, New York, Nanamo, British Columbia. And there are now 10 new superchargers open this week. Oh my goodness. First one in Warwick, southbound in the UK. Next in Athens, Alabama. Bolingbrook, Illinois. Seoul, Gangnam, South Korea. Cheonan, South Korea. San Giovanni Tatino, Italy. Cerignola, Italy. Victor, New York. Florida City, Florida. Volgarac, Croatia. It's finally built. We can go there. <laughs> yes. I'm awesome. very excited. Wow, 10 this week. That's, that's just, that's huge. So awesome. We definitely need some new supercharger reviews just to keep up. I know. I mean, so get out there. built this week. We're yeah. going to need like 10 reviews. I know. So I want to see some of these new superchargers. So get out there. I mean, even if it's an, even if it's one that's been there for a while, we haven't seen, you know, a vast majority of them. So definitely get out there and, and get filming. Every week we give a shout out to three Patreon supporters. And this week we want to give a super duper shout out to Jason Hammond, FB Diesel, and Winter Nevada. Thank you so much. We can't do this show without our Patreon supporters. Um, you know, we have to pay Bobby and Brent to edit right. all they, of our videos. We tried locking them in. Um, yeah, it that didn't work. Didn't for very work. Long. They can call the police with their phones. It, Who yeah. knew that? <laughs> <laughs> um, but seriously, we can't do this um, without our Patreons. We can't do it without um, your viewage, your support. All the things we do on this channel cost money. I mean, right. it. Uh, cameras and putting stuff on podcasts and, and putting them up online all this stuff costs money right we wish it didn't um, we don't get paid to do it right but um, we do have to expend a lot of money right. to do this and i mean last week we got to meet up with basically all of the tesla youtubers we got to yep. meet ben sullins um we got to meet like tesla um we got to meet model three owners club we got to meet james cook Basically, Ryan from Ride the Lightning right. podcast. We would not have been able to do that um, without all of our, all of the support because, I mean, Tesla did not pay for that flight out to San Francisco. They did not pay for um, the hotel. Right. So Or all the food. Right. So Or all the Ubers. I mean, we really couldn't do this without you guys. Thank you so much. Um, we have so much great content to bring you from last week. Um, so definitely be checking that out in the next uh, upcoming days, upcoming weeks. Um, Cause there is just gigabyte. Like <laughs> yes. I think we did something. We, we made something like a quarter of a terabyte of just data. And now Brent and Bobby have to edit it all. Yeah. So that's all of that is send just, your prayers to them. Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna need it. All right. I do want to mention that we have lots of videos that a lot of our new uh, viewers haven't seen yet. Right. Um, so if you want to go check it out, we have, for instance, we did a cross country road trip in the Model X from here to California and back. Uh, going through 25 states and 75 superchargers. We 8,000 miles. Yeah, we reviewed all the superchargers, so go check those videos out. And right. plus a lot of our older videos, which are still good, they're right there for you to see. So yep. go check those out as well. Thank you so much for watching. Now you know.